This is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I'm here in Acapulco, Mexico, and I have Cal Moliné coming in from Richmond, Virginia. How are you, Cal? I'm doing swell, thank you for asking. How are you? I'm doing good, thanks. I uh, saw you recently on a video you did with uh, Ben Lowry, who was a previous Anarchast guest, and I thought it was excellent. I think you are uh, a great uh, communicator of the anarchist ideals, of liberty ideals, and, uh, and you're a great talker. Um, uh, but the first question I'm going to ask you is the same question I ask everyone, is how did you become an anarchist? All right, right. Uh, well, I, I guess uh, I guess all of us have been practicing anarchy for pretty much all our lives, right? Unless, um, if you don't use violence in your day-to-day -day life to solve problems, you're already an anarchist, whether you knew it or not. Um, but I guess for me personally, it's more of a, a childhood sort of thing, kind of anti-authoritative sort of. Uh, I never really liked being told what to do, right? Uh, as a kid, I never really liked the uh, the punishments that came with it, without you know my consent or choice. Uh, and as a child, you know, you have to kind of run away, you have to scream, you have to hide, you have to cower because you have no really any way to fight back or uh, you really have no say, right? Because even if you did, they'll say that, you know, it's, don't talk back, right? <laughs> You're being a mess. Um, my way, I guess, when I was a kid to, uh, to kind of fight back when I was a kid was really just to give my father the uh, silent treatment. Uh, so, like... Uh, he would do something I didn't like, and I, you know, kind of force as punishment to, to do what it is that is required of me. And of course, when dinner time came around, he'll say, "Okay, he, here you go. Here's sir, um, Chef Roy D. Can in a, you know, in a bowl, whatever, and eat." And um, I wouldn't say anything. I just stand there. And then, of course, uh, he wants to play the game. So, two o'clock in the morning, hours later, he comes downstairs. And I'm still standing there, haven't said anything to him, and that will go on for days. And I guess that was my own way to, uh, I guess, ostracize my own father uh, when I was a child. Uh, so I, I don't know. I guess anyone who, who kind of rebels against something they feel unjust is, in a way, an anarchist themselves. That's an interesting uh, way to put it. I never thought of it that way. And so you started very young with your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, and, uh, I didn't say yeah, that I was uh, an anarchist anarchist, a true anarchist. Um, until maybe a few years ago, though, uh, I was always on the. Um, I was always still anti-authoritative. I was always kind of still anti-status. But uh, again, it wasn't until I moved to Richmond where that kind of whole thing changed my views. Meeting really nice people, meeting a lot of uh, kind, uh, warm, loving, gentle-hearted people, that kind of changed my mind in the way how I used to view uh, people. Like instead of seeing the worst. And people, and I see, I see only now really the best. Um, and then after that, you know, trying to find more philosophy on this sort of subject. I've always been interested in philosophy. I've always been interested in reading about these sort of things. I was more, I guess, following Kantian ethics uh, before it came. Stefan Molyneux's uh, universally preferable behavior, which kind of changed my whole my whole argument um, about it all. And uh, is this what happens to be most righteous, the most uh, morally good uh, argument to use? Uh, to show that there is such thing as uh, universal morality, there is such thing as universal values, that we all have them, and uh, you'll find even talking to strangers about these sort of things, you'll find there's really not much difference, not much strangers between you and them, you and that person, between you and your community. Yeah, I agree. I've uh, I learned that through traveling the entire world. Uh, if you listen to the news or you listen to the government, and that's basically one and the same right now, uh, they'll tell you that it's a scary world. There's a lot of bad people out there. Uh, but everywhere I went, uh, everyone is very similar. They really want the same sort of things. They want freedom, uh, even though even though some of them don't even understand what that really is. But they they don't want to be uh, enslaved. Uh, they they want just to be with their friends and family and and enjoy their lives and. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting to hear your uh, perspective on that. So before you moved to uh, Richmond, uh, why were you so negative on people? Was there any particular events that happened? Uh, violence, really. Uh, society, uh, culture. Um, grew up in a life of violence myself, so that kind of um, background sets you up to already start viewing the rest of the world as uh, conniving, twisted, 
um, you know, arms shorter length kind of people that you're kind of, you, you think everyone's kind of like that. Um, and of course, uh, joining the military really kind of exacerbated that kind of feeling because then they teach you that anyone could be, you know, a potential uh, terrorist. You know, I did uh, law enforcement and security, so it's even more heavily on uh, those kinds of group of people that they teach this to. And, you know, I understand the whole uh, mentality behind that and just kind of perhaps uh, made it go a little bit more, more extreme. Uh, well, again, for, for a long time. For a long time, I guess, kind of slowly, kind of waning. Uh, I guess I had my own um, uh, Raskolnikov moment, um, you know, realizing the truth of it all. That you know, that that whole thing about thinking that people are naturally inherently violent. Um, I was wrong. I was wrong about that. I was wrong. I was wrong about people. I guess. Um, I was wrong about. I was misled. Right. We're all misled. We're all born with social security tax at the end of our feet. When we're born in hospitals, we're all born into the matrix. We're all born into this idea that violence is going to set us free. Um, and I was misled too when I joined the military, thinking I was defending our freedoms. And really, in the reality, the situation is we keep losing more and more freedoms. Our government keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I guess uh, my way, that realization for me, um, to actually do something. Really uh, do something real about defending these freedoms that I was doing all those years in the military. Um, to actually do something about that. This is what this is what Liberate RBA is really all about. Um, about anyone who's in Liberate RBA. Uh, I'm not the only leader. Anyone who values the non-aggression principle um, can speak for this movement. It's a leader in this movement. Uh, we need today are role models, people who People who follow by example, right? Uh, not uh, not politicians, not people who forces people to follow them. People who bribes people to follow them. Um, those sort of things. So it's sort of uh, more integrity, and uh, and I believe all of us have that. I believe my whole community can be just as uh, virtuous, right? Uh, unlike what Plato said in the past, that the people can be virtuous. Only one person can, and that must be the philosopher king, and. Uh, kind of started this whole mess, this whole mess about tyrants and rulers. Um, and so I guess that's that's kind of why I, I grew up that way, thinking that way. I mean, every kid in Bolivia wants to be president. <laughs> every kid in Bolivia that grows up wants to be president of Bolivia someday. My cousins, my brother David, uh, <laughs> pretty much every single other person I've met from Bolivia has that sort of uh, mentality. But at the same time, it's not so much for prestige or anything like that. It's really an economic reason behind that because it's uh, there's a lot of poor people in Bolivia and you see these people who get into offices who never get reelected the first year they spend all the money on projects and then the next three years the money kind of siphons and dis disappears and goes away and they know they're never going to be reelected so it's a way to um, get rich it's a quick get rich scheme I mean they even have it here in the United States right insider trading um, you only have to be like a congressman for two years and you have like uh, medical care for life. Um, you know, you can write books about it. You can go for speaking engagement tours for like $750,000 for like working eight years as president. You don't really need that much qualifications like Obama, right, to, to be such a high in that sort of position, that hierarchy, um, to have that kind of power. Um, and so when he's done, he's going to do his tour and he's going to give his speaking engagement. It's, it's a really, really good, uh, quick get rich scheme. Uh, when you look about it, I guess, in a way, uh, through poverty, you know, through looking at a way to succeed in this world. Um, I mean, he doesn't have to try anymore, right? He, what, first few weeks, he already got the Nobel Prize, right? Uh, for going to work, uh, for, for trying, for trying to have peace. I think that's why he got the Nobel Prize. I mean, if that's the standard that the Nobel Prize is having, then, you know, everyone should kind of have their own Nobel Peace Prize for just showing up to work and <laughs> trying. Um, well, he's not even just trying, he's actually killing people every right, day. Right, and that's the reality of the situations. Um, I mean, that's the reality of the situation of all presidents. Um, <laughs> this popularity contest, uh, it's killing people. Um, yeah, and it's, it's no different than, uh, you know, the small shootings out uh, in the Midwest and uh, him saying, authorizing uh, kill orders for anyone who is at least 18 years of old who looks like they're a teenager and they're male and they're in the vicinity of those predator drone attacks, hey, fair game. 
um, assassinations of U.S. citizens. Uh, it's, I think it's like the only law, so to speak, in the uh, Constitution that kind of spells out what the consequences is to eyewitnesses, um, you know, court martial sort of thing for any U.S. citizen to be a traitor. And it just completely, you know, goes over that, right? Somebody says who was a, what, a constitutional scholar, um, kind of talks about, you know, some of these, uh, like really the only law that has the punishment or at least like the way the trial should be handed out. For him, it's just a push of a button, you know, murdered, dead. Um, you know, white stand clean. Yeah, it really amazes me how so many people, it's not just Bolivia, it's everywhere in the world, uh, they, they look up to uh, people like government and presidents. Um, uh, many mothers always say, oh, uh, one day perhaps my son will become president or my daughter will become president. It's, why would you want that? That's a criminal uh, activity uh, where you murder people and steal from people. And it's, you know, it just sort of shows how uh, a lot of the society is kind of warped in this way that they don't really see uh, government for what it is. It's just a gun. And, uh, I, you know, a lot of the propaganda helps. You know, they've 12 years of government indoctrination. Uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Lenin said that if you give me your child for four years, the seed I plant will never be uprooted. And now they have 12 years, and they go for another four years in colleges where the, the uh, professors are often uh, very socialist, almost communist, and, and very pro-state, pro-government, uh, because that's where a lot of them get paid from. Uh, it's just terrible in that sense. Um, but uh, I know I, from listening to your interview with uh, Ben Lowry that you're quite optimistic about the future. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? Uh, uh, what, uh, what do you see happening in the next few years? Do you think we're going to head towards more freedom or are we going to head towards more slavery? I think there's, uh, I don't think I know. I know there's time to still turn it back. There's still time to, to save our country, to save our community, to save our family and friends. Um, our businesses, right? Um, our livelihoods. Uh, before what happens, what's happening right now in Europe reaches our shores, there's still time to turn it against it, to turn, to turn back the tide. Um, I see uh, less than a year from now, there's going to be 50 other liberate movements all across the country, maybe in other parts of the world. Uh, right now I'm talking to other people setting up other uh, liberation movements in other communities. There's, uh, I mean, there's uh, Eric Holster in uh, Newcastle, Delaware, who's, uh, who's doing videos. He's out there doing his, um, spreading the movement out there, liberating his community with his friends, with all the people out there together right now. There's um, Javier up in Liberate New, uh, Rochester, New York, uh, doing the same thing. Uh, a real, I guess, a real freedom movement for anarchism. Not this whole um, cover your face with uh, bandanas and, uh, you know, smash the state sort of stuff. Not this whole... Um, Emma Goldman sort of stuff. I mean, they've had their chance to use this. They've had their chance to to use bomb plots and assassination attempts and uh, and where, where has it got them, right? It only, uh, it's, they're playing right into the 1984 handbook, right? The government wants to know who wants to initiate that violence so they can end it. It's just, uh, you just target yourself for the government to get rid of you. It's like Theodore Roosevelt did with the Immigration Act. This is another way for him to get rid of anarchists. Um, and I think it's, just, it's time for something new. It's time for something different, something that's never been tried before, and to just go all the way with the non-aggression principle. Go all the way with uh, non-violence. Go all the way from just turning away from the state and turning to yourself, turning to your friends, turning to your family, turning to your community. Right? Believe in Let go of the state, let go of voting, let go of violence, and hold on to your friends and family. Hold on to your community. Hold on to those handshakes. Um, but, down, but down to violence. I don't use violence in my day-to-day -day life to solve problems. Right? How is voting any different? How is the state any different? The state knows how to solve problems the one way, and that's violence. Versus the quality of nonviolent solutions we already use in our day-to-day -day lives. And I feel like the best way to do that is just to unite as a community. Uh, I mean, we have, you see what's happening with uh, Chick-fil-A right now. Um, you know, we have like mayors say, you know, I will make sure that Chick-fil-A does not come in my town. You really don't have to wait for one man to do that. You really don't need a politician, a mayor, a congressman, a, or even a president to act on your behalf because you can act on your own behalf, right? You can say yourself and make your own public declaration that says, I will not support um, bigotry. I will not support racism. I will not support homophobia. You can do that on your own. And if you have a lot of, you have a lot of people in your community who shares these values for nonviolence, who shares these values, these community values for freedom, for equality, a whole community 
do that on their own. And you don't need laws, you don't need the police, you don't need the state to do that. Ostracism is our most powerful weapon against anyone who wants to use violence against any member in our community. Because if anyone who wants to use it, because you have to re remember, right? Uh, once, if you're socially ostracized, where are you going to go? No one's going to house you, feed you, clothe you, interact with you. They'll unsubscribe. They'll delete you from their Facebook friends. They'll stop inviting you to their events. Uh, if they're still on MySpace, they'll kick you out. No one will interact or talk to you or even smile at you. Right? There's nowhere else for you to go. That's our most powerful weapon. Uh, the community of um, our freedom of interaction, freedom of association. We don't need laws to do that on our behalf, to force everyone to agree. We can do that on our own. You can have a society of people who agree with it. You can have all kinds of society with others. So you can have a society of people who want to run around naked. You can have a society of people who just want to smoke pot. You can have a, another small community that just doesn't want to smoke pot. You can have all these co communities. All of this can coexist together. You can't, uh, but you won't be able to force like your idea on everyone in one community who doesn't agree with it. Or you can have um, a red light district community. You can have whatever you want, as long as it doesn't infringe on other people on their property, right? Property rights begins um, owning their body. It, it begins with not forcing people, using force, using violence. Instead of persuasion, instead of talking, instead of reason, instead of compassion, patience, and understanding. So where do I see uh, this going? I know it's going to happen. I know it won't be long before all of us will celebrate Victory Day. Uh, and then it doesn't end here, right? <laughs> I want to celebrate our communities. Then there's, there's Canada. Then there's uh, Mexico. Then there's Bolivia. There's the, there's the rest of the world, right? We want to change the world. We want to end all this violence. It's like change starts at home. Change starts with believing in yourself. Change starts in believing in your friends and your family and your community. And all together, you draw that moral line in the ground and you say, enough is enough. Violence is with me. And can you say the same? And all in that line will stretch out and connect to all of your other communities. It's already stretching out to Delaware from Richmond. It's already stretching out to New York and Manchester. It's already stretching out in other places around the country already. There's other liberation movements that we're setting up right now and talking to them and setting up their own, liberate their own community, freedom movements. Um, I came across this uh, YouTube video a while ago. There was, um, it, was a, it was a YouTube video of ants, of fire ants. And they're all, like, they're all on this uh, top of this water. You know, a single ant will eventually drown on it. But if you have a collective of ants together, they kind of ball up and they hold on to each other. Um, they have pockets of air they all can breathe and they can survive that turmoil of water as they're floating on top of it. None of them drown. There's an experiment where somebody has like this, uh, this pen or this metallic device and he's trying to push this ball of ants underneath the water. But the buoyancy and all the ants holding on to each other, uh, it doesn't let it happen. It doesn't occur. It just goes in through the water, dips a little bit, and just goes right back up. Some ants actually try to crawl, crawl on top of the, uh, the instrument. But, but that's what I mean by this. You know, if we all hold on together, if we all stick together, if we all value, um, if all of us value the non-aggression principle, nothing can stop us. Nothing can, can stop a society, a, a community of people who believe in peace who believe in each other, who believe in their own community. Um, so much pressure people want to say. It's always a naysayer in every community. Um, that's, that's, I guess that's, that's where I, I see this going. That's where I see this freedom movement uh, heading in that direction. Um, all across the world. We're already doing it in our day-to-day lives. We're already doing it to Chile. There's no reason why we can't do it to other, um, other entities, right? Other people. Um, people who People who don't value equality. People who don't value the non-aggression principle. Um, the, we have to it's non Let go of our ring. To do something that uh, George Washington couldn't do himself. To let go of that ring of power. Right? Even in the end, you know, um, the most, and most righteous person, you know, uh, Frodo, couldn't let go of the ring. Um, <laughs> he couldn't let go of the ring. And it's uh, to let go of violence is to let go of that power. To let go of voting is to let go of that power. To let go of the state is to let go of that power. Um, but believing in yourself, you know, gives you more power than that. That's this illusion, you know. You can't show me the state. You'll show me a white building. You can't, you know, you'll show me uh, people holding guns in green costumes. I, was, I used to be one of them. 
but there's no real power there. But there is power in the community. There is power in social ostracism. There is power in nonviolence. Our voice is our greatest weapon to combat evil, to combat violence. You know, you have, you know, not this whole thing where, like, every four years, you're like, well, if you don't vote, you don't have I said, what piece of is not my voice? Right? Gun can't inspire people. Gun can only keep people in fear. But the moment you lose sight of them, everybody runs and scampers. But your voice, you can inspire people. You can, you can unite a community. You can unite your own community. You can unite people together. You can unite them against this. You can unite them against... Uh, Check for <laughs> Yeah, that's a great message. I, uh, I've been thinking a lot about that myself lately. I've been thinking about how uh, the state is constantly, you know, I agree with you, the state doesn't really exist, but the people who believe in the state are constantly aggressive against us, constantly stealing from us, uh, constantly doing violence. And what do we, as, as people who believe in freedom, who believe in, in non-aggression, uh, in uh, the non-initiation of force, what do we do? Uh, and for the most part, we, we, we don't react violently. We, we don't punch a cop in the face every day. Uh, you know, we, we, tr we try as hard as we possibly can to be non-violent. And I think that's a really great thing about uh, what our ideology is, what we, what we believe is you could push us so far and we still won't react violently. That's, that's how much we believe in nonviolence. And uh, I've actually been uh, looking into Gandhi a bit uh, recently and you know most of the things he was talking about were very anarchist, very uh, libertarian, freedom-minded uh, concepts. And he uh, changed his world uh, through thought and through nonviolence, and uh, and I think that's really important. And I think that you're totally right. It's about ideas at this point. Uh, if if we want to get across the point that uh, we want to end violence, then we can't participate in violence. And and we can win this war, I believe, uh, through thought. And thanks to the internet, we really have a chance to do that. And I know what you're doing with your uh, liberate movement uh, is really great. And, and you know this wouldn't be possible without the internet. So we've really got an opportunity here to really spread this message and really uh, make a change in our world for the better. Uh, could you tell people about uh, your Liberate movement? Do you have a website or how, uh, how can I get more info? www.liberatervba.com. RVA is uh, short for Richmond, Virginia. Um, on there you'll find, you'll find everything. It's really a template for, for other people who want to set up their own freedom movement. You just copy and paste and just change the name. Um, we have a freedom petition there, right? If there's other ways to participate in this, you know, if, uh, if speaking is not your thing, you, you know, we need worthiness too. We need comedians, entertainers. We need, um, there's other ways to participate. We have the freedom petition, freedom petition you can sign. Uh, and there's a list, right, uh, where you can sign your name to, to show the world that you have the courage, that you have the integrity to stand up for rights, right, to stand up against all this violence. There's other ways to participate um, in this movement. Um, Unlike what the government says, you know, you don't vote, you know, you don't care sort of stuff. Like, well, actually, here's a list of people who do care about freedom. Here's a list of people who who know um, that violence will never set us free. Um, here's a list of people who have that courage and that integrity to stand up for what's right. Um, and this, this whole, there's a list of, um, I think right now, 90 people who've signed it from all over the country. Um, from Missouri to California, New York, Delaware. Um, so on the website, there's uh, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of information. Um, right now, I'm, I'm in the middle of making a liberated a show myself. Um, anyone in my community here who want, has anything and everything they want to say about freedom, um, come on the show, and you know, help, this is a way to help get their message out there. Um, uh, so anyone can participate, right? Anyone who values the non-aggression principle can participate in this show. Uh, so there's a lot of ongoing projects uh, that we've been doing. Uh, we have uh, we just did our freedom gathering last uh, last week, the uh, bomb in the brain series. Uh, that was a good way to kind of start off talking about this violence and by uh, doing like an educational thing and then uh, having an after party afterwards. Uh, two guys from uh, Iraq showed up. Uh, this guy from this Obama pro uh, Obama campaign when we were at Ghislaine Alley Allen, uh, he showed up too. So. This kind of reaches a lot of people in here, right? It's, if when you talk to people, you have to realize you don't have to convince them, right? If it takes 20 minutes and they still don't get it, you don't have to convince them. You can say, "Hey, listen, uh, we're having an event next week. If you still have more questions, why don't you come over, right? Um, still invite the questions. Still invite them out of curiosity to solve these questions, right? Because eventually they're going to stop asking questions out of uh, out of fear and just out of curiosity, right? And that's what we want them to be. That's where we want people to be. Ask 
the rails. We got the answers, right? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. All this stuff is out there. Um, but I mean, if you have extra metaphors, other ways, go for it, right? But that's where we want to get people at, right in that area where they ask about these questions. These answer those questions are the easiest way, I guess, once once they cross that threshold, instead of feeling like we're there to attack them or put them down or insult them or um, or mock them sort of thing. And of course, they're going to hold on to their beliefs and then eventually it's not just so much. It's no longer a discussion. It's a, it's an argument. Um, that's the main reason why we're not protesters. Uh, protesters implies concessions, deals. Um, it implies um, compromise, right? And there's no compromising. And this consistency of nonviolence. There's no compromise for violence. Um, so what we do is just is just a discussion. We just talk about freedom. That's all we do. We're just uh, freedom activists in our community, and just we just go around and just talk to people about freedom. It's not politics. Anarchism is uh, is not a political position. No more that atheism is a, a religious belief. Um, so that's really all we do. That's really uh, you know the first rule of Liberate RBA is. Talk about freedom. The second rule is talk about freedom, um, and that's really that's really all, all, all there is to it uh, for Liberate Army. That's really all we do. Just talk to people, uh, spread the message, plant the seeds of freedom in the community. That's fantastic. Uh, you're a very inspirational speaker, and uh, I wish you all the best with what you're doing there. And I, uh, anyone who lives in that area, definitely check out Cal's site. Uh, sounds like he's doing some great things and, and spreading the uh, word of freedom. Uh, so thank you very much for being on the show with us today, Cal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Cuídate. You too. All right. Cuídate también. And that's uh, another episode of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the Internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. <laughs>